Hey, what's going on YouTube? Thanks for joining the channel. Uh, it's Lawrence with Go Hills Tactical. Uh, today we wanted to talk about um, basically our, our Cerakote oven that we came up with. Uh, watched a few different videos. Um, we uh, decided to go with this Pit Boss. It's an electronic, uh, digitally controlled vertical smoker. And uh, we got it off of Amazon, about 300 bucks roughly. Uh, actually came to us damaged, but uh, we made it work. Um, we just finished putting it together. We wanted to go over some of the modifications we did to better suit it and to show you what we came up with. Um, so as you can see here, you have the top section and then the bottom section comes separate. So when you put it together, these two pieces come together. Uh, now we did notice originally uh, there was a, a fairly big gap going all along the, the edge here. Uh, so we went ahead and used some RTX uh, like door gasket for high temp. Um, so we put that along the perimeter all the way around to completely seal the top and the bottom together. All right, so that took care of that. And then on the door, on the door, we actually did the same thing. It came with a regular rubber gasket, uh, but we went ahead and put it around the door as well to kind of give a better seal. Same idea, uh, taking the inside. Uh, we left out the bottom plate completely. Uh, we got the element here. Uh, we also did some aluminum uh, duct tape that's going to seal your perimeter from the inside and that's actually going to help keep a lot of the heat from uh, giving the RTX seal a beating. Um, <clears throat> you can see we got multiple racks positions. Uh, originally stock, this position here was the highest and you lose a lot of space. So we actually added a couple um, new holes for the rack to get a little bit higher. Uh, then as you can see on the vents back here, we want to close and seal those up. So how we did that, it looks kind of makeshift, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, we actually filled it first with uh, some fire caulk. It's basically fire barrier caulk that fills the space. Uh, once that dries, then we go ahead and put our aluminum tape over it. And uh, that helps, one, the aluminum tape helps reflect that heat away. And it also protects the fire caulk. Um, if you just did the fire caulk, you'd probably be okay. But we wanted to add that extra layer of protection. Uh, last thing we did to it, uh, as you can see here, that is not part of the fan or part of the, uh, part of the oven. We actually added this. Uh, circulating fan. It's like a bird cage fan. Uh, we drilled the hole, mounted it through. And then on this side here, you can see the controller. Uh, use a 120 plug. We'll flip it on, green light, and we'll come in <coughs> and it actually spins. Uh, what that's doing is basically, even though the element uh, is being heated and it registers temperature at the bottom, uh, you want to have that fan circulate the air so you can get an even distribution of the heat through the whole uh, oven. And that's what that accomplishes. And it's located lower, closer to the element. So it's going to actually absorb that heat like the metal of the housing will heat up. And that will actually keep that um, blower on the hotter side, helping push that hot air up. Um, electronically electronically controlled at the bottom. Um, it goes all the way up to 300 degrees. Um, but after all the modifications, uh, you could actually exceed that. So that being said, it's good to have maybe one other probe put in. Uh, that way you can kind of get a real temperature of what's going on because as the air starts circulating in the oven, even though the main temperature is being read at the bottom, and that's what will display on the controller. There is two ports you can add a sensor. I would recommend putting one toward the top. That way you get a better average. Um, but other than that, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, we're real satisfied with how it came out. 
Uh, one negative I'll say, um, the door doesn't exactly line up. That's mainly because it starts to sag. Uh, if you can see that, it's just a lot of weight on the, the cheaper hinges here. Um, but that's okay. When you go to latch it, what I usually do is I kind of lift up on the door a little bit. And I, the latch is adjusted, but I'll lift up on the door until it's about even. And then I'll go ahead and clamp it down. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe and like the video for more content later. Thanks.